What is good, y'all? Welcome back to uh, my YouTube channel. <laughs> um, on this video, we're going to be basically kind of going over the elephant in the room that was not addressed at all last week. I realized that after I kind of reviewed last week's video. Um, I really didn't even go over why I even shaved my beard, right? And I think that's, for those of you who haven't kept up with my journey on podcasting or even on Instagram, uh, it probably came as a, who the fuck is this guy, right? Like all of a sudden, last video we get 14 months ago, he has a full on beard. Um, and now it's like completely shaven. He's talking differently. Like what the hell has happened to him, right? Um, and I, 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 there is a reason for that. There is a reason why I shaved up my beard. Of course, I, I love um, to go ahead and change up my look, but that doesn't have it in, that's not the entire uh, kind of breakdown of that. Um, so I'm kind of gonna, gonna go into really the um, growth hack that that helps me achieve when changing my looks, changing my character, um, and reinforcing the person who I am becoming each and every single day, as well as what happens when you don't do that, right? And a lot of people don't do that. They get kind of get stuck in these uh, uh, hard jam poles or max out their potential because of, of their hard rooted beliefs. And, and this is what, what, um, um, I learned as, as, as called as, uh, flipping your binary poles. So, um, really to start off with, what is a binary pole, right? Um, really, uh, like I said before, binary pole is a hard jam belief of what you believe you are. So like if you believe you are, Hey, I'm not a morning person. I can't go to the gym and work out early in the morning. Um, that's a hard jam belief in yourself, right? At the end of the day, we all have choice. We all have the option of choosing our own realities and choosing um, our character of who we believe we are um, and how we like to maneuver and operate in this world, uh, whether that be in our business, whether that be in relationships, whether it be in our personal life, whatever whatever that may be, um, we all have the, the power of choice. Um, and understand that those hard jam beliefs are just hard jam choices that we ultimately at some point in time max out, right? So uh, like, um, you know, like I said, both these are choices um, and we can even, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at my notes by the way, because there's a lot of things in this that I want to get through. Um, like I said, this is going to follow the podcasting platform as well too. So I like to go ahead and go off my notes, um, but you guys don't see me looking down all the time. Um, but basically with, with, with the beauty of this is that you can go ahead and, and choose to say, hey, I am a morning person. I do want to work out early in the morning. And believe me, we are going to get into how this even ties into barbering. Trust me on this, all right? TTP, trust the process on this one, okay? Um, this is actually what I go ahead and, and help with, with South Bay Chris, um, that you see him just have this incredible growth curve. Um, whereas some barbers, including myself, you know, you kind of build up uh, your business to a certain standpoint and you kind of max out, you, you waver off. You don't see that um, continued growth in your business. Um, and really how do you hack that? Everybody asks, how do I continue to grow? Um, and they, they blame everything else. Oh, it's my city. Oh, it's, um, uh, my clients don't want to pay me this price. Yada, yada, yada. Um, but it's really these choices that you make inside your business and make inside of your, your business's operation. Um, that really hard jam you and like, yeah, you can't grow outside of that. You have to switch things up. You have to flip some binary poles and switch some beliefs of yourself, um, to start recreating growth for yourself. Um, and this all shapes the characteristics of who we are and every characteristic shapes the identity of who we believe we are and what we're capable of as well too. Um, and, and these binary poles, AKA choices, uh, can be extremely useful and aid us in progressing and growth in business, such as I am creative and that allows me to be artistic with my haircuts, um, and so on and so forth. So you can literally choose what direction you want to go in. And I know this kind of seems a little foo foo like, oh, okay, if I say this, this will happen, manifesting type of stuff. Um, we'll go into a little bit deeper root of, of, of it's not that. So what this kind of creates, so basically flipping binary poles is, is somebody can be, let's say, disciplined and undisciplined, right? Let's say, um, let's just say go chaotic and disciplined because those are kind of two very different points um, where we both see, especially in the barber industry where people kind of operate at. The chaotic person, the chaotic barber, you know, falls behind all the time. Um, they're not, they don't have like a systemized approach to getting clientele um, or even raising prices or building their business up. Um, and they're, they're going out partying all the time, right? They're not taking care of their bodies. They're not systemizing their business. Um, and they're not learning anything. They're kind of just, they're kind of out here just, just living it up, which is no problem at all, but they don't experience any growth. They experience growth at first, 
right? And they become very successful or, or build their business up to be very successful because maybe they're going out meeting new people all the time um, as a result of, of, of being in this, living in this chaotic moment. But they're never able to move past that point, right? They kind of stay within that area. Um, whereas also, do you have a disciplined barber who comes into work on time all day, every day, um, takes care of himself and his clients, um, is working hard every single day, uh, goes to classes and stuff like that consistently, but they too also max that out and still don't see that progressive um, growth in their career. Now, um, what is chaos and, and, and what is discipline? Like, like I said, chaos can basically be, be defined as like creative, new ideas, brainstorming, messy, unfocused mind. Um, but in reality, that chaotic person is just allowing themselves to take a different point of view um, and attaining a, a, a and attaining the, a, a goal for themselves. So basically, like um, if they want to build a clientele, right? Instead of being disciplined, staying in the shop all day, every single day. Um, going to sleep, waking up, you know, having systemized, taking care of their bodies and stuff like that. They go out partying, right? They go out saying, "Hey, let's go ahead and and, and go out and and um and say what's up to all these people and 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 get new clients in." Um, whereas the disciplined person, um, you know, once once they found that area of, "Hey, this works to get new clients. Hey, this works to build up my business." Um, they literally just focus on that one thing. They cut out everything else and say, this is the one thing I need to focus on and I'm gonna hard jam this out uh, until you know, the, the, the brakes fall off or the wheels fall off because re in reality, like they found the winning mechanism and both are great, but both are necessary. Um, and this cycle repeats over and over and over and over again, right? In terms of the disciplined person will continue to continue to do more discipline because they believe that's what uh, will get them to that next level. Whereas the chaotic person also believes that that will get them to the next level. But in essential, essentially, they need to flip, flipping binary poles. Um, and this doesn't just have to be with the, I, I gave a very bland explanation of going out partying and staying in and, and being focused on the business. This could be social media, not on social media, right? This could be um, focusing on haircuts, not focusing on haircuts. Like it could literally be with anything. Um, and this literally just allows you to to effectively jump the growth curve, um, you know. And, and and basically, what a growth curve is, and and, and I'll, I got a whiteboard here too, coming all prepared on this one. A growth curve is basically um, what I'll draw out for you right now. It's a little S, right? And this is what we all experience um, during a let's say when we're when we're going on a path um, of consistency, whether that be in chaos or or discipline. So. Typically, people believe growth happens like this. We'll go ahead and draw this graph. So, uh, this is like a big ass whiteboard for not a very. So, people believe chaos or, or growth happens like this, right? Here's the graph. Here's a uh, positive, positive. Um, so, they believe it will just happen and go up consistently. The more that they go ahead and stay consistently on that path, the more growth they'll experience. Whereas in reality, even sometimes people will, I should say in reality, even sometimes people believe, and this is very true too, if, if you know what to, how, to, how to effectively master this growth curve, that your growth will look like that as well too. But that is not necessarily how it, how it looks all the time. When you need, when you want to go ahead and accelerate growth, especially whether it be in your barbering career, you need to um, you need to to recreate yourself at each and every single step. Right? Uh, have you ever heard? Of, I'm pretty sure um, those of you who are watching this video, you've heard of what got you to where you're at will, won't get you to your next level. Right? What got you to where you're at right now will not get you to that next level of yourself, or not get you past that next level of you. So. Um, and that's basically true with the growth curve. So with this, it's like an S curve. So what you have to experience is something similar like the past one before. You start out slow, you see an increase, but then you waver off, right? And the same thing can be had, like let's say this is a barber that starts out, just starting out. They're growing, they're charging $20 right now, right? Charging $20, they build up their clientele. All of a sudden they're in a shop, they get a lot of walk-ins, boom, okay. Get that, get that. But then they start tapering off with money-wise, right? We'll say this is, um, how are we going to do this one? This is money. 
and this is clients. Um, so, wait, did I do that correctly? Yes, I did do that correctly. Because at some point in time, they will reach a peak of money. Maybe not so much. Maybe they'll just hit the clientele and they'll stop. Maybe not the best representation, but you understand what I'm saying with this, at least hopefully. So basically, what they will do is they'll go ahead and get the business um, growth they want. But at a certain point in time, they plateau, right? And this is the most frustrating part of when you're a barber, because this is where when you're a $20 barber, $30 barber, $40 barber, it doesn't matter where you're at. At some point in time, you're going to hit this curve. You're going to go ahead and flatten out and you're not going to experience growth. And then that's, this is when this is when all the crazy stuff hap starts to happen, right? This is when all the um, other people in the industry start telling you, hey, you know how you make more money? You, sh you shorten down your, um, your, your cutting time. You cut more clients. All this other bullshit. Um, where in reality, you just need to go ahead and recreate yourself. And the best time to recreate yourself and recreate this S-curve is right at the peak. Because before you flatten off, you're already starting to recreate yourself again. So it's like a continuous growth. So that is how you go ahead and have that growth. And I guess it lo looks a little bit more like this, which doesn't help my explanation, but you understand what I'm saying. Over time, you will see the curve go upwards. So how do you go ahead and beat that as a barber? Right, because we all max our, ourselves out at some point in time. We all go ahead and we have things and areas and beliefs, especially in our business, that we max out in terms of our operation, um, how we go ahead and attain clients, as well as our price points. Um, and you have to allow yourself to create new growth and never max out what you do. And, and honestly, this is like the ultimate growth hack for really any business. You see, you look at it with like. Um, Players like Walmart versus Amazon, right? Uh, Walmart thought they were the biggest, like, baddest motherfuckers on the planet. Um, they got lazy. They got to that. They got to that plateau almost, or they got to the peak of the growth curve, and then all of a sudden they didn't adapt. They didn't change themselves into something new. They didn't go ahead and go into and flip a binary pole to recreate the growth curve. Um, and then all of a sudden you see Bezos come in and just completely shut shit down on the whole industry. Um, so this doesn't just, this isn't just like a theory that like I pulled out my ass. This is something that's actually used in business. And I think um, a lot of times, especially in the barber industry, we don't look at business uh, effectively enough or close enough to uh, really advance our own industry, right? We, we kind of, like I said before, there's an idea like, hey, just do 30 minute haircuts, cut down your haircut time to double your money. Um, and if that was true, whoever was doing a two minute haircut would be the richest motherfucker and be charging the most in the industry. And we all know that's not true. Um, so you have to understand what truth is. Truth is like wh who creates the best product? Um, and not just like the best fade, but also who knows how to, uh, leverage that as well too with their audience and create demand for themselves. Um, and having the right mixture of that and having a correct understanding of that as well as recreating themselves over time, uh, will come out on top as you could tell. Uh, so <laughs> how this ties even ties into me like being and shaving my beard off. So if you've been following my journey, you've seen me with literally uh, I had a beard and buzzed haircut, right? I had, I used to have like rock a three on top mid fade. Um, and then I started growing my hair out like it is right now, like a crop top. And then I, I bleached it, right? That was me flipping my binary pulse because I was so hard jammed in terms of discipline wise, um, for myself. Um, I was already recreating my new character or I, I was already recreating, um, who I need to be in more of a chaotic mode to look at the same problem, uh, that I was having, which is how do I grow my business? But I was looking at it from a different angle, right? And when you, when you go ahead and look at it from a different angle, um, you start getting, or, or go outside of what you already believe. Um, you start having new ideas come in like wild and because you're not, you're not like, you're not worried about focus. You're just worried about, okay, how creative can I be with this? Um, and that's great because you get a lot of incredible ideas. Um, but then the, the hard part after that is how do you go from that point and then switch it back to very disciplined, hone in on one thing. So then after I went ahead and dyed my hair, I grew my business up a lot, went really big on social media. 
Then I wanted to go ahead and go into business. I said, okay, well, I can't be posting on social media every day. I cannot be doing this wild, this wild stuff every single day or, or, or creating content every single day. So I need to go dark. And then I went ahead and, um, of course, I already, I already had my, my dyed hair cut, uh, cut off. Um, so then I grew up my hair for like a year and I grew up my beard as well too. So I was, I was looking very shaggy, um, cause I knew it wasn't going to be on social media. I was like, fuck it. I might as well try, right. Uh, get a different view of something as, as disciplined as this. Um, and for about a year I did that as well too. And then I said, you know what? Um, right now I need to go back on social media because of what I've learned. I've built my business back end wise. I have the results, right? South Bay, Chris, Suncuts, Josias, King Cardell, um, no way. Um, uh, Brendan Gorell, Berg Styles, all these guys have had incredible results uh, under my one on one mentorship program. Um, I need to go ahead and start getting back on social media um, to go ahead and give the value that I've learned for, from this and what I teach them. Right. And what 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 kind of I saw the changes that allowed them to see the growth like this. Right. It was it was stuff like this, like South Bay Chris. We had to go ahead and get him from, you know, he was charging, I believe, I believe, 20, I don't think he was charging 25, maybe 30 bucks when he first started with me. Um, and he was booked out, right? He, he was booked out at, at cutting in his garage as, as a, you know, barber student. He was in barber school still at that time. Um, and he's like, yo, like I, I want to go ahead and get higher paying clients, but what I'm doing right now is not working. I said, great. And, and intuitively I already knew we had to flip his binary polls of what he was doing. We had to get him on social media. We had to get him out of his comfort zone of what he was already doing on social media. Um, switch some stuff up, get very creative, look at the same problem that we're looking at, get like increasing prices and getting clientele, but looking at it from different angles of how we can attack. Then we determine after a while period of that, what angle of that is, can we go ahead and hone in on and get very disciplined on that one, right? After we go through the chaos moment, have all these different ideas, pick one of the best ideas to move forward with and get disciplined on, and then flip him back to a discipline standpoint, which we're still working on <laughs> with him. He loves to go ahead and stay in chaos, but switch him back to a discipline standpoint um, and really hone himself in and get disciplined every single day, hammer that thing out. Um, and that's why you've seen him over... The course of a, of a year and, and a year and a half of working with me, he's gone from you know charging thirty bucks to now he's charging a hundred bucks. Still in the same situation, still does not have a barber's license, still cuts in his parents' garage. Nothing's really changed, except he flipped his binary poles back and forth. He switched his beliefs. Um, he doesn't let himself max himself out at whatever he's at because whoever South Bay Chris was, um, you know, charging sixty bucks or eighty bucks, whatever it was before, um. And, you know, I even had to go down to LA and have a meeting with him. And I told him straight up, like, look, um, you know, you're, you're maxing yourself out. We have to switch. We have to flip some, some stuff up again. Um, and being able to really assess where that to maneuver from that with, um, how to structure his business and really how does that align with his overall goal? Um, and ma matching everything up. And that's where you see the growth act come from. Um, and this can be done at any level. Um, let me see what else do I, have? and this, you can even see this doing during like weightlifting as well too, right? Um, you can go to the gym and lift like, like, let's say we're, we're doing bicep curls with dumbbells, right? You can pick up, uh, let's say a 30 pound dumbbell and rep it out for 10 reps, uh, five sets each and every single day for 10 reps. Those first couple of days, you're going to get growth. You're like, Ooh, my muscles so sore, right? Like I'm getting this thing probably by the, by like that uh, week and a half mark it's not going to do anything. You need to switch it up. You need to either switch up the repetitions, the weight, something in there, a variable needs to change. And that's the same mentality that, that, um, barbers need to take with their business, right? So you have to switch something up, um, and take a, a take a more, uh, scientific approach with your business and, and really take a, take a, take an outsider's look and say, okay, let me take a step back. What is working? What is not working? What I've been, what have I been too hard jammed on? And then what is truth? And where do I move from this as well too? Um, now, you know, what you can expect from like flipping these binary poles and, and what I've experienced at least is like, Hey, look, when you're like charging anywhere from like 10 to $20, um, uh, that's typically, uh, for a haircut. That's typically when you're getting a base level of skill, right? You're, you're just getting a base level of skill. That's the, that's the growth curve you need to go ahead and, and make. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab this thing again. Ugh. let me see. We're going to go ahead and create another beautiful graph for you guys. So, let's see. At, at 10 to $20, there we go. You are trying to cover 
Beskillo. Like, honestly, I, is that even backwards? Oh my goodness, that might be the worst thing ever because if that's backwards, I'm, I'm, it looks backwards to me. So I'm just gonna go ahead and erase this because I don't know how it's gonna show up on the video. I'm recording this like facing me. So it looks backwards to me and that would be extremely awkward for you guys watching. Um, but basically 10 to 15, 10, uh, what was it? 10 to 25 bucks uh, price range is simply, you, you know, you're trying to master your base skill level. Um, you, you, that's, that's the growth curve you're trying to get out of, or you're trying to master is trying to master base skill level, trying to master who can I cut, get my business up and running and not out of survival mode, because that is one of the worst moments to stay in. And unfortunately, most barbers stay in that S curve. They, they, they grow, they get up to that 25, maybe even $35 price range of survival mode and just stay there depending on area wise. Um, the 30 to uh, $55 price range is typically when when uh, they the barbers start to cut the fat on the clientele. What I mean by cutting the fat is you get rid of the clients who either really don't ever tip. I mean, you're still gonna have clients that don't tip you, um, but you're also gonna be getting rid of clients that, um, you know, they, they have basic haircuts. You know, especially when you get up to like $50, $55 price range, you're not gonna have people who have, have basic haircuts in terms of like sideburns blocked off four in the sides. Uh, those clients just don't typically come to you, right? Um, so you're trimming the fat on your clientele and getting more um, closer to specialization of your skill level. And that's really what you always want to be going towards, especially when you're charging higher price is getting into specialization. Um, and at that point in time, uh, you're also turning on the faucet of, of, of a client generation machine. So if you're, if you're raising your prices anywhere between say, 30 to 55 bucks and you're charging that much, um, more than likely you have some type of like you, you're getting some some clients off of social media right? Unless like you're in a very popular shop, even then you still probably, you still probably have like some skill that you're promoting on social media and people see you. It's probably not at its uh, maximum peak at its maximum potential, but somewhere along the lines, you have some clientele coming into you and you're just starting to get the revolving door going. Um, at a, and that, that's, that's the growth curve that you guys at that range must go ahead and not only get to, but then overcome. Uh, from the $60 to $90, um, that's really the one you start mastering your client generation machine. Like really like you start mastering uh, how to get a client from social media, from a post, from organic posts that you go ahead and create to then go ahead and click it on your uh, booking app and booking an appointment with you and, and paying for that price, uh, right? You're really starting to master that and understand that because you're nailing down your client specification to about two to three client types. Really? Um, when you start cutting hair, um, you like for me, when I was charging about a hundred or 200 bucks for a haircut, really 150 to 200 bucks. Um, I really only served one client, um, and not like one client, like just, just one person, but like the aesthetic wise, um, I, I had one look that I was serving. Um, and when you get into specialization, people can understand, say, Hey, this is the guy to go to. If I need this, I was the guy to go to, like, honestly, like people that look like me, I know I have like stubble right now. I'm not growing back the beard. I'm going to shave it off. I, I just need to clean up for this video, but you know, I do kind of like this look right now, but, um, it was darker, darker features, uh, darker hair, dark complected hair, maybe a lighter complected skin, um, and a big beard, big, thick beard. And they trusted me with the aesthetic as well as getting their beard correctly fitting on them as well as sheer work um, because that that's the look that i had um now that's the look whatever you have is not going to be not saying it's going to be the client that goes for you but i mean look at look at somebody like vic blends right vic blends doesn't have waves <laughs> he likes to think he has that boy vic loves to think he has waves but his clients like come to him because he is a he's a guy who understands how to uh get clients who have waves um, laid down, perfected, like dude is like a fucking master with the thing, right? Um, so it doesn't have to be somebody who looks or has features exactly like yours. Um, and also the problems that you start, that you solve, um, for your clients start to become clear. So, um, you're not going to understand exactly for, at that 60 to $90 range, exactly what those problems are for your clients. You're going to have a good idea of like, ah, okay. I think these are like, especially at the, t at the 10 to $25 range. I ask barbers this all the time when when they um when they're on when we get a, on a call with them to uh, about elevated mentorship and I ask them what why do clients come to you you know what problems do you solve and most problem that you solve is not consistency it's not um uh, great conversations or anything like that a, a problem that you solve is something more like um something with their head 
right? Or maybe a uh, shape that, th that, they, that they can't get anywhere else or understanding how to fit the hair onto their head um, or even their beard specializing in, hey, no matter what their face shape is like, their beard is gonna be perfectly sculpted to their face no matter how maybe wide, slim, uh, chunky, whatever their face aesthetic is, um, you're gonna be able to fit that perfectly on their face, facial structure. And then the 100 or $200, and this is just my, in my experience too, by the way, don't take this as ultimate truth. This is just what I've seen not only from my students, but also myself. Uh, then the 100 or $200 uh, basically growth curve. Uh, really, from my experience, I mean, it creates, a, uh, you create preferred clients at will. So basically, you already know how to go ahead and attract clients that you ultimately want. You know exactly the client that you want and you know how to go ahead and get those clients in your in your chair. So you know the problems, you know how to aggravate those problems in your social media content, um, as well as you know how to go ahead and what posts will go ahead and make and generate more clientele. And it's a crazy thing when, um, when you get to a level of mastery of, of social media skills, when you know a post that comes organically, um, you can throw up there. And you know exactly what it's going to get, give back in terms of retaining clientele. Um, and especially at a price range of $100, $200, um, it almost becomes unfair. <laughs> and it, it, it really becomes a, a fun game. Um, and really, you only serve one type of client. Like I said, uh, at, at the end when I was cutting hair full time, I only served one client. Right. And, and that client almost looked like me. Um, I remember Dunn the Barber, he, he looked at me one time. He's like, bro, all your clients look like you. Like literally they, they look like, they look exactly like you, like the aesthetic and everything. Um, and then you start nailing stuff down to about two to three main problems that those clients face. So whether that be for me, it was like, hey, you know, my beard, even though guys get my beard lined up really, really nice, sometimes, you know, eat a, a, a perfect lineup, is it doesn't mean the lines are perfect. It means it fits my face perfectly, right? It fits my facial structure and fit, and sits on my face perfectly. Um, also, maybe the 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 sheer work on top. You know, in terms of, uh, I even had a client come back to me. I I I, I could just cut in my apartment like every now and then uh, for a couple clients. Um, but I had a client come back to me and he was like, "Yo, I went to another barber." Um, and I literally was like, "Well, I guess I gotta be start paying these prices, right?" Because like. Um, you know, like the $200 price, because like at the end of the day, like he said the cut was cool, but the sheer work, he was like, yo, dude didn't know how to like, it just was not the same at all. And when you start getting into that, um, with your clients, they literally, I mean, they'll pay any price because they can't go anywhere else. They can't go into anybody else to get that look that they want. Um, so really, um, you know, flipping your binary polls in terms of, of, of hard rooted beliefs of who you are, what you believe you can do. Um, really starts this progress, the chaos versus discipline point. Um, really figuring out, okay, um, I haven't been on social media, right? And, to, and I'm not saying me, but like, let's say for you, I haven't been on social media, I haven't been posting, and I want to go ahead and raise my prices uh, by 10 to $15 in like the next three months. Great, well, to get there, you know, you've maxed out whatever you've been doing so far to get you to this point. What is that next thing that you're going to have to go ahead to then re-stimulate growth up to get that next S-curve to really start outdoing yourself? And the best way to go ahead and ensure that you don't plateau is to always start that next S-curve at the peak of the last S-curve. So like, here we go with this whiteboard again. Come on, baby. <laughs> I love this thing. I love the content we're making right now. It's incredible. So instead of, let me go ahead. Instead of waiting right here to go ahead and make, or, or, or then try to figure out what the hell you need to do next for your next, for your next, uh, whatever it may, maybe price range or growth hack for yourself. The best point of reference is right here at the peak, at the peak, maybe even like right there before it even starts to plateau off, right, right there. So that way you ensure that, okay, cool, right here, you can go ahead and take that little, that last little bit of momentum and then you go ahead and, and keep on growing. Last bit of momentum, keep on growing. And you keep on going up and up and up and up and up. And you keep on beating out whatever growth and plateau that you, because we're all, always going to uh, experience plateau in our business. We're always going to go ahead and experience some type of um, maxing out of who we are hard rooted believed as, um, even if it's like, I can't wake up in the morning. I can't, I'm not, I'm not a disciplined person. I'm not organized. Um, and it's when you actually take a look at these things, um, and outside of 
taking another class, taking, um, going to another barber show, shaking more hands. Like, um, I think all that stuff is important in the industry, but I think this is not what's talked about enough. This is, at, for me, at least in my experience, this is what has allowed me to um, grow in my business. Um, and, I, and as well as my students, right? You see Sun Cuts just raise his prices up 50 bucks. The kid literally didn't even think he could charge any more than 30 bucks for a haircut when we first started out because he was in a college town. I'm like, yo, look, college students are not your clients. They're cool right now, but um, they're not your clients. I'm in Sacramento, personally, right? Sacramento, if, if those of you don't know, um, is not somewhere where people go ahead and get money like LA, where people get money um, or throw money around in other big cities. Um, it's, a, uh, it's a state capital where people come and come to be safe and people come to relax and um, not spend money. <laughs> so the fact that, um, even this works out in, in, in somewhere like Sacramento, this can work out in Indianapolis. This can work out in Ohio. This can work out. Um, hell, if there's barbershops in Wyoming, let's go ahead and see what's going on out there. Um, Arizona, like this, this can be, go ahead and be going on anywhere. Cause these are, these are true principles, um, that if you follow to a T, Hey, the shit will be incredible. Um, so that is, uh, that is it with this YouTube video. Um, if you found this of value, please go ahead and like and subscribe to uh, this channel. Uh, I will be dropping videos like this every single week, um, typically every Sunday around, you know, around this time. Well, not this time, but around the morning or midday of Sunday. Um, really just giving experiences, not only what I've gone through in my barber career um, that has allowed me to grow, but also from my students like South Bay Chris, um, Sun Cuts, you've already heard all these guys, we don't need to go through them, D David Escamilla, um, all these guys that have an incredible success so far and continue to grow um, and continue to um, get ahead of the industry, they go ahead and follow this S-curve um, type of growth hack. They go ahead and, f and flip their binary poles at will. They understand how to go from discipline to uh, chaos and then flip it back to discipline once they have the answer going through chaos. Uh, they don't stay in one or the other because they know, look, the chaotic person will always beat out the disciplined person, but the um, disciplined person will always beat out the chaotic person after they flip back to the discipline, if that makes sense. So, um, you know, you can't, you can't have one or the other. You can't just stay, stay in one zone. You always have to be flipping back and forth to create that growth. Other than that, y'all, um, by always, uh, by, by always, wow. Uh, but always, <laughs> uh, make sure to like, subscribe to this video. Um, like I said, we'll be, I will be dropping videos like this every single week. Also make sure you go ahead and subscribe to the podcast. I also drop content like this on my podcast, although it's not visual. Um, I do go pretty in depth. I know this is like a 32 minute long video. So if you've stayed through this, congratulations. You're not somebody who gets, um, annoyed or just wants to go ahead and get quick and easy answers. Um, that's actually a great character trait. If you go ahead and stay through videos like this, um, and it's probably, it's also why, I, not probably why, it's also why I make videos like this. Um, because those who stay through, through content like this want that growth. They want to go ahead and experience, um, as well as they're in it for the long haul. They're not just trying to get the short, quick hack. They want to go ahead and say, hey, no, ma how, no matter how long it's going to take me, I'm going to get the fucking uh, win and I'm going to get make this shit work. So with that, y'all, um, I will see you guys next week on uh, another YouTube video. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I should go ahead and make in, at the end of this. I feel so I've never done a video like this. So this is kind of like, what should I do at the very end? Um, other than that, um, yeah, make sure you guys go ahead and subscribe to the, to the podcast, Deluxe Podcast. All that will be in the description below. Uh, as well as make sure you guys follow me for any updates as well on Instagram. I know I'm not on Instagram all the time, but that is where I like to go ahead and shoot out updates, especially on my story um, in terms of new YouTube videos dropping, new podcasts dropping, or any other information that I have up and coming. Um, as well as, look, if you have any questions or need to reach out, uh, by all means, DM me on Instagram. Go ahead and reach out to me. Uh, I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. Of course, I do have a business run with Elevated Mentorship, uh, the mentorship program that like South Bay Chris, and, like I said, all of them go through. Um, so, But I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can because I, I feel like value like this is um, sorely needed in the barber industry um, and taking a different view and a different angle um, is desperately needed in times like this, especially with what's going on right now in the world. Um, because look, <laughs> We want to go ahead and get ahead of the game, especially right now. There's, it is a 
very interesting time right now, but also a very incredible time for those of you who don't use uh, the back door of like, hey, look, we have, an, we have a back door literally wide open of an excuse of why we shouldn't be doing work right now. Um, we should be just sitting at home and just doing nothing. Um, but there is a lot of work to be done. All right. So the invitation for all you watching this is simply, hey, look, don't step out that back door. Please be responsible. Right. It doesn't mean go out and cut hair all the time, but let's start working. Let's start not working, but like, let's start figuring out what that next growth for you is. Um, as well as, hey, look, six months from now, where do you exactly want to be at? Um, and really hammer that out. Um, not just a year from now, but just six months, three months, two months, a month from now, where do you want to be at? Right. Take this time to really think about that. Take this is an incredible time where we get to kind of reflect and 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 see where we want to go ahead and change our lives, especially in the face of what's going on. So it's an invitation for y'all. Um, other than that, I will be back on next week's video with uh, some more content. And I appreciate you guys for watching. Always love y'all.